Then you, uh, as you mentioned, uh, you, you have to have earplugs, and this is being filmed through a uh, wedding screen. Even then, the, the, the camera didn't like it at all. Um, it, it's, uh, the plasma, as I said, 25,000 degrees, so it's pretty violent. And whatever we feed through it gets melted. And then what we have this little <laughs> something that's bright there. It's actually a rotating drum. It rotates really fast. Now, substrates, the one that you, for example, that you have there, is just sitting on it and it's being rotated. And the only reason we rotate it is because otherwise we just melted this metal in a minute. You have just one lot there, and obviously that won't work. So we have to also provide some cooling at the same time. And um, what, what you can see there on, on the thing going around, so we actually sprayed this sand, vitreous stabilized zirconia, onto a piece of metal. So that's only half of the cell in the, uh, the uh, second elephant is still missing. <coughs> Another projection technique that we've been using is something that we call spin coating. So we take our substrate, um, that's our, our cell. It could be, could be the one that you have in your hands at the moment. And then place it on, on uh, uh, track, we call it. Something that has a vacuum, we suck it tight, and it just stays there, and then we start rotating really fast. And then we can drop some, uh, some solutions on the top. Ceramics can be produced from solutions, it's not any problem, it's being done. Uh, very high chemical quality, and you produce very thin layers, and we'll come to that in a second. Um, you measure all kinds of things, and you can, you can play around. In, in science, basically, you can always play around with every menu. Uh, Parameters on the, on the production rate, and each of them gives you some completely different performance in the end. So, we always have to try and optimize all of them. Uh, just one example of a uh, research uh, done. Uh, it's, um, if you look at that, on the top, that black part is the electrolyte. So, whenever you see that, that's the white stuff that you see. It's our stand again. And on the lower side, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a very modern cathode. Now, obviously, if you have uh, something sitting at 1,000 degrees for a long time, and there's going to be some reaction between the elements that you have in there. And uh, we want to increase the efficiency, so we've come up with new cathodes that are faster in, in the reaction rate, that diffuse the actual ions that we produce to, to be electrolyte much faster. Uh, to wrap it up much more efficient, but unfortunately they react with our standard electrolyte. And uh, how they do that is this little cloudy layer that you see there, and as soon as you have that, your electric performance basically dies. Uh, so it would be as if you have a brick wall, and put the brick wall between two batteries, and that's your battery in series. Obviously there wouldn't be that much charge going through the, through the brick wall. And um, we use the spin coating to prevent that layer. So research, so try, and try, and try, and try again, and then you try again, and then you try to explain everything that you do. What you see on the left top part is just the the, the same white, which is the elastic on the sand, like the one that's going around, and then something spin coated on top. So you see this brownish layer that didn't go all that on the well. So if you look at it in SEM pictures. We want to make a very dense layer so that the reaction layer is being prevented. And that's not dense. That's not dense. And that looks like a sound like a very cool work almost. And yeah, so that, that, that didn't really work well. So we, we tried it on a couple of other things and without going into the science in too much detail, we, we proved it to this part. <laughs> so, there's still lots of holes in, in, the, in the actual surface. We want something that's absolutely dense to prevent the direction layer, but also to, in order to allow the, the actual ions to travel through the layer, because well, the stuff that we still want to go through it, still has to go through it. So we came up with this. This didn't really work quite well. And another month later, a couple months later, <laughs> yeah. So in the end, you just hopefully arrive at a point where you can actually produce something that is according to how you want it. And in this case, we want a very dense layer, and that's reasonably dense. And uh, we not only look at it, we also test it electrochemically. So we put these cells into our test stands. We've got a variety of test stands at NFC. It's a very uh, 
state of the art facility. The building was actually just built last June. So we just moved in. And uh, very nice testing facilities. <coughs> and then we can see that they are uh, much better. And if you look at the cross section, again, we take the solid break apart. Um, it's the same thing that I've seen before with this black cloudy layer. And there's no cloudy layer anymore. So, uh, research has been very successful um, in this case, just one example. Um, we, what, can, what you can see is sort of between, between the fuzzy stuff on the lower side and the very dense stuff on the top side, there's a thin whitish layer, and that's the layer that we produce by spin coating, and that's actually already two layers, so they're twice. It's actually two times 120 nanometers, so it's not totally some 300, it's a bit less. But it's, uh, it's uh, 120 nanometer layers that you can produce with this uh, technique. And nanometers sort of, uh, I don't know if that's normal, it's about 120 thousandths the width of your hair. No worries. So, just a couple of other words. The, uh, first of all, research. Uh, can be very frustrating at times and can be very rewarding at times. If you actually get something out of it and you can explain what you actually did, no matter whether it's very good or not, as long as you can explain it, it's something that's really something nice. Um, science is kind of an international bunch. You know, people that usually get together and do something. Uh, for example, me, uh, I did my undergrad in Germany and then in the UK, and then my master's degree in Sweden, and then I worked in Denmark on fuel cell technologies. Where I met somebody in Canada, and then that's when I decided to come here. One of the guys from IFCI brought me in, basically. And uh, that's what it is there, too. It's, it's just an international bunch of people that come together, the experts on the field, and that, that's how it usually works. So, even if, if you, whatever you study, basically, whether it's physics, math, even biology, engineering, any kind of degree, you usually end up being in the same place in the end. So the other degree that people actually do don't really matter that much. <coughs> there's, uh, there's something else that we don't develop, that's something called biofuel cells. So you use yeast or any kind of cells, there's even people that want to use cancer cells as, as, a, as an energy source. And uh, you just need to feed